The Washington Commanders seem to have slowed down when it comes to free agency. They have made their signings when free agency first opened, and now it seems that they have kind of turned things down a little bit and are waiting until the draft to make some more moves. Here on the Next Gen Fan Podcast, I'll be reviewing who the Commanders have signed whether those signings are going to be quality starters or just depth players, as well as looking at some news surrounding DeAndre Hopkins and his future, whether the commanders should pick up Chase Young's fifth-year option, and whether Washington should consider drafting a defensive end in the first round. All of that and much more coming up right now on the Next Gen Fan Podcast. This is the Next Gen Fan Podcast. Thank you for listening. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast give me a five-star rating, and leave a review. All of that is very helpful, and I really appreciate it. That and as well as making sure if you have any family members or friends or people you know that are Commanders fans, let them know about the podcast. I would really appreciate that. So Washington, they really started out strong when free agency first opened, when the legal tampering period first opened, and they have kind of really slowed down after that. They... Initially ended up signing some some bigger names like Andrew Wiley uh, at first. Ended up getting Nick Gates in that first day. So they did make some moves. But overall, it's really kind of slowed over the last couple weeks. And now, after the commanders really have seemed to have stopped, uh, this is a great time for me to assess all the moves that they have made and to really give you guys a, a good feel for who exactly... Washington got whether they are going to be a a key piece or just some depth player and how the commanders did overall in free agency so starting out with Jacoby Brissett now Jacoby Brissett he played quarterback for the Cleveland Browns last year he's bounced around originally drafted by the Patriots then went to the Colts where he started for two to three years there so he has definitely bounced around a little bit but overall this is a good signing just off the bat uh, because this is a, a quality backup. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, I think, is one of the better backups that was on the market, uh, considering the, the price range that Washington got him at, which I will discuss here in a minute. And I think that this is also a great move for Washington because this is a, a veteran quarterback who can help grow Sam Howell along the way and need be can go in there and perform uh, if he has to. So Washington signed Brissett to a one-year, $8 million deal, with $7.5 million guaranteed and a max value of $10 million. Now, the $8 million is a little bit too much for what I wanted Washington to have spent on a backup quarterback. I know that, you know, to get a decent one, you obviously got to spend the money, but, you know, at the same time, if Sam Howell doesn't play well or if Sam Howell gets hurt, I mean, that is kind of the end of the line for Washington because. Ron Rivera needs Sam Howell to be good in order to to keep his job uh, because hopefully Sam Howell being good correlates to uh, the team being good, which correlates to a playoff berth. And let's all hold our breath, but uh, maybe a playoff win, just saying. Uh, Hasn't happened in a very long time here in Washington, but you never know. Maybe Ron Rivera, year four, Sam Howell, maybe, maybe they got something cooking up in the front office at Washington. However... If need be, if Sam Howell gets injured or he just doesn't look the part, I feel very comfortable having Jacoby Brissett come in there and play a few games. Um, I I wouldn't want him to start the season. That's not really going to happen. But if he was starting, you know, maybe more than like four or five games, then I would start to get a little bit worried. But, you know, overall, I think this guy can go get it done um, on on a short-term basis. Last year, he started 11 games. He completed 236 passes out of 369 total passes, 64% completion percentage, 2,608 yards, 12 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions. So not a bad year for Brissett, considering this was a a Browns offense that actually is, in a sense, like Washington's, where you have talent in some positions, but overall is still struggling, uh, especially at the quarterback position. So he, he played the 11 games while Deshaun Watson was serving his suspension, Brissett definitely played better than Watson, uh, undoubtedly, over the course of the 2022 season. I actually think Brissett played pretty well overall. Um, 
like I said, I think this is a, a good signing for Washington, and I feel confident if he has to go in as the quarterback, but I feel a lot better about getting a veteran guy who can help mentor Sam Howell. Next up, Andrew Wiley. Wiley was the starting right tackle for the Kansas City Chiefs last year. He has been with that team for about five years now, and he has bounced around position-wise, uh, whether that be guard, tackle, the Chiefs decided to let him walk. Now, it was reported that Wiley did want to come to Washington partially because of the fact that Eric Bieniemy is the OC here. Washington gave Wiley three years, $24 million. And Wiley, I think, is this is a big move for Washington. Uh, definitely their biggest move of the offseason so far. However, it does come with some question marks. Andrew Wiley gave up nine sacks last year he also committed eight penalties so it does bring up some some questions as to whether Andrew Wiley is you know a a capable starter obviously the Chiefs uh weren't down with him so they let him walk so that that does raise some some question marks but overall I do think this is a an upgrade obviously Wiley will start uh at right tackle um, you'll have Leno on the other side. Now, what I do think Washington shouldn't rule out is drafting a tackle in the first or second rounds or any time in the draft, mainly because you've got Leno, who is getting up there in age. Um, you're not sure about Wiley, although you're hoping that he can he can get it done. So overall, I do think that this is a great move for the commanders to get a, a solid tackle. Uh, it just, you know, he comes with some some concerns, and we're, we're going to really see over the next couple of seasons whether he can kind of put those penalties behind him and, you know, maybe sure up the uh, his, his play so he can, he's not giving up, you know, nine sacks, which was tied for third in the NFL last year. Trenton Scott was the next pick for the commanders, the next signing, and he is a, a guard slash tackle. Uh, he's bounced around. He's undrafted, signed by the Chargers. He's only played 31 total snaps. Two-year, $3 million deal for Scott. He is 6'5", 320. So the hope is, in, in my eyes, that Washington is going to be able to kind of mold him into being a starting or a, at least a, a quality guard or tackle need be. Uh Again, this is this is strictly a depth player for now, and unless Washington is able to turn him into something more, uh, you know, he's going to be your, one of your backup guards. Uh, looking at that guard room so far, I assume Washington is going to bump Cosme into guard. Then you also have Chris Paul, you have Trenton Scott, and then you also have Nick Gates, who I will get to in a moment. Those are just the four guards on the roster. That's not pertain that's not including anybody who Washington may draft so I mean you're already starting with you know you've got your starters and your backups here so you're gonna have to make some moves if you draft a guard which they undoubtedly should if you sign another guard which I'm still open to but again Trenton Scott depth player here for Washington so really nothing crazy next up Nick Gates this is a interesting move for the commanders Gates has had some injury concerns. He ended up having a major leg injury at FedEx Field a few years ago. He signed a three-year, $16.5 million deal, max value of $18 million, and a $8 million guaranteed. So Gates, the former Giant, has played a total of 368 uh, snaps in 2020. He committed four penalties, gave up one sack. Now, the interesting thing with Nick Gates is I'm not sure he is a starting caliber guard. I am interested to see what Washington does here if they think that they found the answer at guard. Uh, they did this last year, albeit they they didn't give out a three million dollar three year uh, contract. However, with Trey Turner and with Andrew Norwell, that obviously turned out to be a disaster. So hopefully, they are still going to have an open mind to this O line, uh, given the fact that they they have made three signings. And hopefully they're not thinking they solved the solved the problem, but I don't think Gates is a starting caliber guard. I think that he is a a good backup, uh, but again, I'm interested to see how he performs in the 2023 season. 
Washington also signed Abdullah Anderson. Uh, this is a guy who you've probably never heard of before. They signed him to a one-year, $1.7 million deal. Undrafted in 2018, Chicago picked him up. He's bounced around the league. He had 40 combined tackles and one sack last year. This is a depth defensive tackle. Uh, no more than that. And if he's able to become something more, great. But you've already got three good defensive tackles, two great ones in Payne and Allen, and then you've got Federi Mathis, who you drafted last year in the second round. After that, you've got Abdullah Anderson, who you just signed. So that's four DTs right there. Uh, depending on how they they rotate, you know, the defensive ends and tackles, and how they how that roster shakes out. I'm not sure whether this guy will make the roster, but somebody who Washington brought in. Next up, Cody Barton signed a one-year, three and a half million dollar deal. This is going to be your other starting linebacker. Unfortunately, Washington lost Cole Holcomb in free agency. Uh, this was something I really, really wanted Washington to get done because I really thought Cole Holcomb was a, a quality player for them. He went to the Steelers. So they ended up getting this guy, Cody Barton. He was drafted in the third round in 2018 by the Seahawks. And last year, he had 126 combined tackles, two interceptions. Uh, this is a, a quality linebacker. Uh, he's not a world beater, but this guy can definitely get the job done. I'm excited to see what he can do. And this is a good pickup for Washington. Just secure that linebacker spot because they did re-sign David Mayo. Uh, but you've got Jamin Davis, who you're really hoping takes another big step. And then Cody Barton, those are going to be your starting two linebackers. And then finally, Cameron Dantzler. Dantzler drafted in the third round back in 2018. Uh, he was picked up off waivers. The Vikings originally drafted him, and he just didn't really pan out. He is going to be a depth corner, no doubt, uh, if he even makes the roster, which is a good possibility. In 10 games, he started 9 of them. He had 44 tackles, and he allowed 39 receptions on 50 targets. Uh, so not really good there. And for Washington fans, you're, you're really hoping here that they can kind of mold him into being uh, a – a quality corner. This guy's got the tools to do it. He has, you know, the longer arms that you are looking for in a corner, uh, Washington especially, uh, kind of like a Benjamin St. Juice in a sense. So hopefully they're able to kind of turn him into something. But, you know, at the end of the day, I claimed him off waivers. So uh, I don't really have high hopes for that. And then Washington also re signed Tyler Larson, F.A. Obata, David Mayo, and Danny Johnson. Overall, in free agency so far, and I say so far, it, the reason why I say that is because Washington should not be done. They should not be done signing guys. They should not be done, you know, looking at their uh, their big boards and making sure that they, are, because obviously their roster is still has a lot of needs. Uh, I still think Washington should be out there looking at guys, and they, you know, the cap is becoming a little bit of an issue. They only have about $3 million left in cap. However, look at teams like the Saints. Look at teams like the Rams. Those teams and other teams are always finding ways to manipulate the cap. And, you know, the good teams do it. So I, I think Washington, you know, they should be able to find a way. If other teams can do it, then they surely can. Uh, the cap isn't the end-all, be-all. We've seen that in the NFL. Uh, teams are all often able to to figure out ways to you know make more cap room when needed so uh washington should be able to do that if they find players who they deem uh adequate enough to add to the roster um you know at this point in free agency a lot of the, the big name guys are gone uh there still are plenty of quality players who washington can sign it just becomes an issue of whether they're willing to pull the trigger just reading from the list of the top free agents uh, from NFL.com. We've got OBJ, Nick Ngakwe, Puna Ford, Shaquille Griffin, a DB. Washington might be looking at a guy. They should be looking at a DB because uh, their DB room is uh, not deep at all, especially at corner. Jadavian Clowney, Rocky Sin, another defensive back. Dalton Risner, a guard. Oza uh, Isaiah Wynn, a tackle. Marcus Peters, corner. Leonard Floyd, an edge. So... Washington, obviously, there's still players out there Washington should go get. Um, I think getting a, a corner and then maybe getting, you know, another guard, whether it be Dalton Risner, uh, whether that be 
going and getting a guy like a Connor McGovern and bumping him to guard. I think that they still need to go out there and get players. With that being said, overall, I gave them about a C plus, uh, mainly because I think they addressed some needs, but I don't think they solved the problem. Eat like I, I think they got players, but they didn't really get enough quality talent to where I'm, I'm satisfied. I still think O line's an issue. I still think DB is an issue. Uh, linebacker, I still think, is an issue. So, overall, I think they did good. Uh, they addressed some needs, but they didn't fully answer the problem. They still need to find more talent. They still should be looking to find more talent. And, overall, I think that you look at the last few years, they really kind of, they do this all the time where they're really active the first few days, then they really tail off, and they kind of get back into it later in the year when you've got teams trying to make roster cuts to get down to the 53 and they kind of pick up on the other team's leftovers. Uh, that's how they found, you know, guys like Charles Leno. Uh, really good find. The Bears cut him. Uh, they were able to pick him up. He's been really good here in Washington. So if they're able to find a few guys like that, you know, maybe another DB, uh, again, a guard, somebody like that, I would feel much better. Uh, but overall, C plus for the Commanders. Now, coming up next, I will be discussing some news surrounding DeAndre Hopkins' future. Whether the Commanders should pick up Chase Young's fifth-year option and should the Commanders draft a defensive end in the first round. All that coming up next. So DeAndre Hopkins, he has, first off, been one of the best receivers in football over the last few years. Uh, Really had had a suspension last year and an injury the year before that. But in 2020 and and years before that, he was one of the best receivers in football. And he has really struggled over the last two seasons to, one, stay healthy, but to, two, stay and and get back to that, the true DeAndre Hopkins that we know. He is currently a Arizona Cardinal, and news has come out that if the Cardinals, who have been trying to shop DeAndre Hopkins, uh, are not able to find a trade partner, which it doesn't seem like they have one yet uh seems like they're gonna cut him which does bring up the interesting conversation is, is what is it really worth it to cut a guy that talented in deandre hopkins to get rid of some of that cap it, his cap hit in 2023 is 30 million dollars which is a ton uh and then next year 2024 it's 26 million dollars so it is going to be absurd to keep a guy with that cap hit with that being said whether you can restructure uh, that is definitely an option however it does appear that the cardinals are trying to get both compensation and the form of draft capital as well as trying to have teams take part of that salary which you know really doesn't make sense you look at what washington did last year with carson wentz where they did both they gave draft compensation and they took on the entire contract um, one, I think that's a really bad practice in general, but two, uh, for a team to get draft capital and to take that salary, it really doesn't make sense. Uh, you only generally see teams do one or the other, especially with a cap hit of, of this, uh, this number, uh, the dead cap hit in 2023, if they cut them today, would be 22 million. Uh, if they cut them in 2024, it would be 11 million. So it's still going to be a lot for the Cardinals. Uh, they're trying to move on from him, and if not, they're going to cut him. Uh, have 22 million dollars in dead cap, and DeAndre Hopkins will be on the market. It just seems like teams do not want to take that cap hit, um, and are and or are not willing to give up the compensation the Cardinals are wanting. With that being said, Chase Young, there's A lot of talk concerning whether Chase Young's fifth-year option should be picked up. Uh, To keep it short, I think they should pick this up. I think it is kind of a no-brainer. Yes, he has struggled immensely over the past two years with with that ACL injury, and then when he comes back, uh, as well as before that injury, he was just not looking the same. But overall, I think if you are Washington, you need to bank on his potential. Uh, This is one of the faces of your franchise. I mean, you go to the Washington Commanders website. There's a picture of Chase Young, Terry McLaurin, and Josh Allen, or John Allen. Those are the three players they're featuring. When you look at the uh, when when they rolled out the, the new name, 
It was Chase Young. It was John Allen. It was Terry McLaurin. I mean, those are your guys who are the faces of your franchise. And now I'm, that's not the main reason why they think they should keep Chase Young, but you need to bank on the talent that this guy has showed. His salary this year is $4 million. His salary next year is $17.5 million if they pick up that fifth year option. So overall, that'd be $22 million for two years, $11 million per year. I think that's that's a really good deal for a quality pass rusher. That is a really good deal. Uh, the problem arises if when you don't pick up that fifth year option and he plays well, then you're you're going to be struggling to either get an extension done or he's going to walk. Uh, if you do pick up that fifth year option, then you've got some buffer room to get that extension in. But however, it really all depends on whether this guy is going to, to come back to what we saw in the rookie season. Uh, it doesn't seem like Washington is going to pick up that fifth year option though. Ron Rivera stated that, you know, it's an ownership issue uh, that they don't have the money. It seems like, which really doesn't make sense because you just gave Deron Payne uh, a, a bunch of money, uh, $90 million for four years. So I'm not sure that money is a huge issue there. Uh, but, you know, I'm not sure what the, the details are with how much money they are allowed to spend. With that being said, they should pick up his option because you need to bank on his poten potential. And it's really kind of you're just hoping that he flips a switch and, and goes back to what you saw in the rookie season. Now, should Washington draft a defensive end in the first round? When I heard this question, I thought it was kind of obvious. Obviously, no. Why would Washington need a defensive end in the first round? Uh, then I realized that every defensive end except for Shaka Tony has an expiring contract in 2023. Every single one. So that brings up a big issue. Now, there is talk about, you know, should Washington extend Montez Sweat? Obviously, the Chase Young fifth-year option stuff. Uh, so I'm not sure whether they should keep either one of those guys. That's a, a topic for another day. However, Washington does need to consider and realize, and it, again, it, it you know, Ron Rivera may not even be here next year, so it might not even be his problem. However, they do need to understand that, you know, we're not going to, if you do make it another year, you're going to have a really big hole to fill. Uh, overall, I still don't think that justifies it. I don't think they should take a defensive end in the first round, mainly because, one, they have too many pressing needs. O-line, quarterback, if one of the big four falls to you, uh, Will Levis, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, or Anthony Richardson, whether you go tight end, whether you go guard, whether you go corner, there are plenty of needs on this roster, and defensive end is not one of them. Two, you cannot draft for the future because you have pressing needs at now. Washington does not have a luxury to draft for the future. One, because they have needs. I mean, there is no they're not it's not they're not good enough to draft for the future. Two, they don't have the time to do so because they might not even be here next year. Washington needs to win now. Ron Rivera and this front office, they need to win now to keep their jobs. They need to draft talent that will help out this roster. You cannot draft some defensive end, even if he is, you know, some star pass rusher, because he's most likely going to sit behind Chase Young or Montez Sweat unless something major happens. So overall, it doesn't really make sense for Washington to draft a defensive end in the first round because they just don't have the luxury to do so. Thank you once again for listening to this episode of the Next Gen Fan Podcast. If you are not subscribed to the podcast, please do so. If you have not left a review or a five-star rating, please do that as well. I would really appreciate that. And then if you have any family members, friends, or just people you know in general that are fans of the Washington Commanders, please let them know about this podcast. I appreciate that. If you have a question you would like me to answer on the show you can send me a voice message a link will be down in the description for that as well as the podcast is now on youtube so you can go there uh, subscribe to the podcast there you can listen there it will all be posted on youtube i see around forces firefighters police officers and emergency personnel thank you for listening god bless you and god bless America.